right, guys, here we are at CES 2024 with Brian from Projector Screen. What's up, guys? All right, Brian, man, show us what we got going on here. Cool, so I'm gonna take Nick through a little bit of tour here of the four movie booth here at CES 2024. So we're starting off with the flagship product, the thing that really put four movie on the map here in the United States, it's the four movie theater. This is one for the past two years, the laser TV showdown put on by Projector Central in both the video judging portions as well as the audio quality. So with the integrated speakers from Bowers and Wilkins, you have an unparalleled audio experience that you'll find in any of the other USTs available in the market right now. And obviously, the tremendous contrast and wide color gamut and image processing that the theater has is what's given it all the accolades and the positive reviews everywhere that you see. Now, what's interesting about this is Brian runs the website projectorscreen.com. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with that, you need to go there because Check here's the deal. They not only show you the projectors, but they also sell you the screens. And it's really important because the projector with the wrong screen just doesn't always look the greatest. And you recommend for this projector, the Fresnel screen, correct? Well, it really depends on your ambient lighting condition and your seating environment, right? So in this particular instance, you know, 4Movie has partnered with Spectra Projection and they have the 120 inch highlight Fresnel screen. One of the things that the Fresnel screen really excels at is its high level of brightness and its ambient light rejecting from essentially all directions aside from beneath it with the projector. So one of the things that you'll notice as you're standing dead center, you have a really bright, vibrant image, but as you start to move over to the side and you get off axis, you're gonna see that level diminish. So we would really recommend this particular type of screen pairing with the UST when you're seating, um, your seating positioning is generally within the width of the screen itself. Yeah. Right? Um, however, alternatively, you would pair it with what would be a lenticular screen. A lenticular screen is generally the UST ambient light rejecting screen that you're probably most likely familiar with. It's not quite as bright. It doesn't reject light from the sides, but it gives you a much wider viewing angle. So you could be laying down on the couch on the other side of the room and have a pretty comparable viewing experience to you know yourself sitting right in the center of the screen as well. And it's really good at rejecting light that's yeah. above it. Like, exactly. So if most of your light's coming directly above it, that's another good thing. Yeah, so actually both of the screens do. So the way the lenticular screen works, it's got a series of ridges, almost like awnings, that uh, reject the light from coming from above, where the Fresnel screen is using like concentric circles. And I'm drawing this, you know, Nick's going to add it in later somehow, right? <laughs> no, I'm but not. It's, <laughs> it look like that. It's a, it's a series of concentric circles that get larger as you start from the bottom up, and that really allows the light to be rejected from all of the other sides, except from directly beneath it. That's pretty amazing. Now, what else did you guys bring here to uh, the booth that you want to show me? Cool, well, let's go take a walk over here and I'll show you. Oh, actually, uh, you know what? Before we go, one thing I forgot to say, and we forgot to say, is a lot of people are used to watching a projector, and we've been talking about sure. this type of screen with the lights completely off. Now, what you did, which I thought was really cool, what 4Movie did in this booth, is they allowed it to be a translucent screen above or at least allows the light to go through so that you're seeing what it would look like actually in your household environment with the lights on which i thought was yeah really it's a really idea. good point you know there's several other ultra short throw projectors you know from various companies here and one of the things that you'll notice as you walk around is they're doing everything they can to control the light around it we're talking black walls black ceiling no light creeping in from the side and yeah it has a really bright punchy image but what four movie was trying to do here is give you something that's more emulative of a living environment right so while there's no lights on in here you know we're casting shadows so there's obviously light coming from other areas you should have no trouble seeing Nick's beautiful face and how and how great he looks with all the light that we have going on <laughs> this has more overhead light than my living room right exactly sure. absolutely all right let's go see some of the other right, stuff cool. you're talking about so we're gonna just creep by over here so I guess we'll take a look at this real quickly here what we've got hanging on the ceiling over there is the four movie x5 so this is their lifestyle projector that also placed extremely highly in the projector central lifestyle uh, projector showdown. What they're projecting on the wall over here right now, they're not using a screen. This is going on a very heavily textured dark gray material. And they're really projecting some artwork here. Kind of give you like an ambient viewing experience as opposed to a cinema experience. But don't let this representation short sell the capabilities of that projector. It, like I said, it really excelled in the lifestyle projector showdown. It has 2400 lumens. It's got a phenomenal contrast ratio, really great image processing. And you know, and this is uh, an awesome onboard projector. Denon audio. And this is a laser projector. This is a laser projector, absolutely. It's a single laser projector using ALPD technology, just like everything else here from 4Movie. And that's what really gives it such an amazing image quality and substantial contrast. And a lot of people, for those that don't understand, that ALPD technology is one of the reasons that allows 4Movie to get such good contrast. Correct? That's exactly it. So ALPD is uh, the light engine made by a company called Apotronics. Uh, 
sister parent company of Ford Movie. I'm not necessarily sure of the familiar relationship, but they're very intertwined. And they produce the light engine, and with that light engine and the anti-speckle technology, which is also something that we didn't talk about, it has the least amount of laser speckle. And that's not something that you're really going to be able to pick up via the camera, but it's something that plagues a lot of uh, other ultra short through projectors. It really makes it unwatchable for some people. Yeah, actually, I've seen a couple that have had such bad laser speckle that I wouldn't watch it. Yeah, absolutely. It can be very distracting. So the four movie products really excel at the reduction of the laser speckle and providing very substantial black levels of contrast. And for those that haven't seen laser speckle, it's almost like little mosquitoes flying all over the screen all the time. They're like just lighting up. It's it's very... I, I refer to it as rainbow glitter. Yeah, that might be. But, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's very distracting and lots of little colors flashing. Really very evident on white backgrounds and light colors. And very and bright. Yeah, bright. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what, what else should we look at? Oh, so let's here. mosey on over here. Excuse us, everybody. Okay. So what we have here is the latest product to hit the United States for, for a movie. This is called the Cinema 3. So this also has around 2,400 to 2,500 lumens, 3,000 to 1 contrast utilizing the same ALPD light engine, except the thing that really differentiates this from the theater is that it's a single laser product instead of a true triple laser RGB. So it's not going to have as wide of a color gamut, but still have that phenomenal contrast, and really it's coming in at an exceptionally low price point at under $2,000. And what we have appeared on here is that other type of ambient light rejecting screen that I talked about. This is a lenticular surface. So it's made up of a whole bunch of different ridges, and this again is from the brand Spectra Projection. This is their Phoenix fluorizing screen. So this screen has been, uh, just came to market. It's got an acoustically transparent bottom so you can place your speakers behind it. Oh, and right here. Yep, absolutely. So it's perforated. You can barely see through it, but it allows really high audio fidelity to come through. And this has been engineered to uh, outperform the market leader in the fluorizing projector screen space. One from a mechanical operations, it's got better motor and controls, it's got better tensioning, and it's got a better optical surface that's gonna give you not only a brighter image, but lower black levels as well. Now this is something that they can pick up at projectorscreen.com. Absolutely. Everything in this booth you can pick up at projectorscreen.com. What size is this one? This is 120. This is 120. So, it's pretty big. It's huge. <laughs> you know, I had a friend recently that just bought one, and he was upgrading from 100 inch, and he bought a 120 inch. And on paper, it doesn't sound like that big of a, a difference. Sure. It is a huge difference in size. I don't think a lot of people understand. We're talking 10 inches diagonally, which makes everything significantly bigger. Yeah, you know, one of the interesting things, this is 120 inch. So some people will think it's twice as big as a 60 inch. It's actually four times bigger than a 60 inch. You're going to have four 60 inch TVs in the same space as this 120. So sometimes people are like, oh, the difference between 100 and 120 is not that large. It's actually, I think, about like 44% larger by, by surface area volume. Yeah, I recently just upgraded from 100 inch to 110 inch, and we looked at it and we're like, wow, this is a huge difference. Yep. Well, you know, you're going to about to see something a little bit bigger as we go to the other side of the wall. Well, let's check it out. All right. So what we've got here is the 4Movie 4K Max. This is their brightest projector. This is at 4,500 lumens. We're projecting it up here, again, on a lenticular projector screen from Spectra Projection. This is their Vantage. Now, this is massive. And another thing I want to point out that Nick also showed before is look above. There's not even a ceiling, there's not an awning, there's not a shroud of any type. So this was a pretty bold move by 4Movie to be able to put something in here with absolutely no treatment to diminish the ambient light. And regardless of that, you know, you're still getting a pretty bright, vibrant image. Now, those of you who are familiar with Dune are going to know what this is supposed <laughs> to look like. This is not as colorful of a splash image as you're seeing on the other side, but this is what the movie looks like. And again, it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> I can't even touch the, the top of this. And the thing that's crazy, so things that a lot of people may not realize is one, when you go bigger with a projector, you lose brightness. Two, Absolutely. when you don't have it in a room that's not light controlled, you lose brightness. And the fact that this right here can still cut through all the light at 150 inch screen and that we can still see it is extremely impressive. I've been to some booths here, and I'm not going to name any names, that have been showing these in a similar environment with a 100 inch screen that's struggling. Yeah. Absolutely. So to Nick's point, as you increase the image size, you're dispersing the light energy over a larger area. And generally, you're going to use something called a foot lambert 
uh, calculation to determine the total level of brightness based off of the light output of the projector and the size of the screen and the reflective properties of the screen. Is this projector for sale? This is a projector for sale. So this projector is for sale at projectorscreen.com. Now what's different about it than what you're going to see on the other two for movie products that we looked at before is this does not have Android or Google TV operating system. So this is still going to be using the Feng OS operating system. So if you want to use any of the smart applications here in the United States, you really want to plug in a streaming stick. $25, $5, Fire Stick 4K, Roku, or use your Apple TV or something. And I like usually recommend the NVIDIA Shield for most people anyway. Absolutely. So. NVIDIA Shield's a great option. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for sticking with us. Brian, really appreciate it. Thanks awesome, for walking man. us around Thank the Thank you so much for coming by again. It was great meeting right. you.